Welcome to the ITDVDs.com YouTube channel. This is just a sample of the training available at ITDVDs.com. If you would like to see complete training, please go to ITDVDs.com. Now let's begin the sample. Redundancy with DHCP is very important because if our DHCP server is down, then clients that are configured to have their IP addresses configured automatically won't be able to get on the network because they won't be able to get an IP address so that they can communicate on the network and that's going to be a big problem so we want to create redundancy with DHCP, DHCP to do that we're going to have two DHCP servers now the question is well how do we create a scope and make it so that one DHCP server doesn't hand out one IP address and then the other DHCP server hands out that same IP address how do we keep these consistent well the answer is we don't what we actually do is give them different ranges to hand out within our subnet. So we configured a scope earlier with an address pool of 192.168.6.125.2.135. And prior to Windows 2008 R2, we would have to do this manually where we would go over to another DHCP server and create another scope that was maybe 192.168.6.136 2.140. So basically, that address pool would be different than what's on this DHCP server. So that way, you wouldn't have one DHCP server handing out one IP address and the other DHCP server handing out the same IP address and therefore creating an IP address conflict. Now, with Windows 2008 R2, we actually have a split scope wizard that will do this for us and create redundancy with DHCP. And it it's a nice wizard to use because it also helps us with our scope options and uh, reservations, things like that, copying all that over so that we don't have to manually do it. And sometimes when we do it manually, we make a mistake. Now, before we do this, one of the things we want to make sure is that the server options are the same or if they're different, we want to make sure that we mean them to be different on our other DHCP server. I'm going to be calling it our secondary or backup DHCP server. So here's our primary DHCP server, which is DC02. We have our server options, our DNS servers, 192.168.200 and .199, and we have option 15 here with our DNS domain name, which is itdvds.local. So I need to make sure that these server options are configured on our backup DHCP server so that they're consistent. So let's go over to what's going to be our backup DHCP server. Okay, here we are, and this is actually DC01, so I'm just going to launch the DHCP snap. And now I just installed the DHCP role on this particular server and authorized it. Didn't do anything else, though. You can see I don't have any scopes or server options or anything like that. So we actually want to add the server options that we have on DC02, which is our primary DHCP server. So I'm going to right-click. Go, click on configure options check the box for DNS servers and we're going to add 192.168.6.200 click add and we're going to add 192.168.6.199 as well so I'll click add and then we're going to go down to option 15 which is DNS domain name and we're going to type in itdvds.local Click OK, and there they are. So now our server options on our backup DHCP server, which is DC01, are the same as what's on DC02, our primary DHCP server. So let's go back over to DC02, and let's say this is the scope we want to make redundant. We're going to right-click on it, go to Advanced, and click on Split Scope. Click Next. Now we're going to select the DHCP server that we're going to add and make our backup DHCP server. So I'm going to click on Add. Ours is already authorized, and it's DC01, so I'm just going to highlight it. Click OK. Click Next. Here's where we select the percentage of this scope that we're going to give to uh, basically our backup DHCP server. Now, when we're initially designing our subnets, hopefully we allowed for enough IP addresses that we could have uh, let's say we needed a hundred DHCP clients, then we would want 
200 available IP addresses for DHCP. That way we could split, do a 50-50 split, so that, let's say our primary DHCP server was down for an extended period of time, we wouldn't have any interruption of service because our secondary DHCP server would be able to handle all of the requests and wouldn't run out of IP addresses. Now we may not have that situation, so we would have to go to what's called like normally an 80-20 scenario where we give our primary DHCP server 80% of the available IP addresses and our secondary or backup DHCP server 20%. And we can change the range either by using this slider or typing in the values. I'll put it back at 80, 20, and down here we can see exactly how it's going to break up this address pool. So I'll click Next. Next is the delay. Now if we're doing a load balancing situation where we want both DHCP servers to handle requests, we would probably leave these at 0, 0 because we want the closest DHCP server to service the request. Now if we're doing a, a primary and a kind of a failover situation where we only want our backup to respond if the primary is down, then we would want to add a delay to the added DHCP server and this is in milliseconds so I'm just gonna change this to 1000 so I'll give it a one second delay and most of the time it's gonna make it so that our primary DHCP server will respond first and that's the DHCP server that our DHCP clients gonna use so go ahead and click next and before I click finish there's one other thing we need to do earlier we created a, a predefined user class, or I'm sorry, we created our own user class. That's not going to be transferred over in the split scope wizard. So we need to make sure all of our user classes are on both DHCP servers. Now if we haven't defined our own user classes, we don't have to worry about that. But let's go over to DC01 and create that user class real quickly that we created in an earlier movie on this D DC02. Alright, I'm on DC01. Just going to right click on IPv4, go to define user classes, click add, and we gave it a name of laptops, and these options are for laptops. And again, this you don't have to do if you did not define any, or if, if you didn't create any user classes on your own. So by default, you don't have to do this. And the ID was laptop options. So go ahead and click OK and click Close. Now let's go back over to DC01 and click Finish. Great. The split scope was configured successfully. If we ran into any problems, we would see it here. Now if I did not create that user class on DC01 that we had on DC02, it would actually gave me an error and rolled back the migration. So let's take a look at DC01. And here it is. Now we might have to hit Refresh to see the scope here. We can see the address pool. And the pool, you notice the pool is the same. What it did is it created an exclusion, 192.168.6.125 through .132. These are the IP addresses that our primary, DC02, is going to hand out. So again, the pool is the same, but it just creates an exclusion. And you'll notice there's a little down arrow here. We do need to activate this scope. So I'm going to right click on it and activate it to make it active. So let's go over to, well we can look at a couple other things here. We've got our scope options. You can see these are copied over. So these are the same as what was on DC02. Even our reservation is the same and copied over. So this helps so that we don't have to manually do this. And let's close out of this and I'm on DC02 right now. And you can see if I hit refresh, we've got a new exclusion here, 192.168.6.133 through .135. These are the IP addresses that DC01 is going to hand out, so that's why they're excluded here. So the split scope wizard is excellent. DHCP should be redundant in your environment. Hopefully when you create your subnet, you allow for enough uh, addresses to be available for your DHCP clients. 
or, well, twice as many as you need so that you can have full redundancy between your DHCP servers. If not, you may have to go to a failover in an 80-20 scenario like we just did.